All right, Lorenzo, uh, welcome back, man. It's a, it's a rematch for you. Um, any difference in preparation after having been in there with him for a little bit? No, same old same. And what were your takeaways from that fight? Obviously an unfortunate ending. Um, can you just give me your feelings about the way that things went down that night? Mm. I feel sorry for the Tacoma fans. You know, um, it sucked for them, you know, for the people, you know, who came out to support me and sucks for that, but you know, I'll make up for it. And um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see this fight. And I know after that fight, I believe you had kind of posted on social media that you were fairly unhappy with the way that, that kind of that whole thing played out. Um, is, is that fight like, is this fight personal at all at this point, just with, with the injury that, that he allegedly had? And It's not, not so much personal. It just show it just, I think as a fighter, we're we're always trying to find that that chink, you know, in the, in the, in the armor, you know. So I think for that fight, it gave me a big insight into you know what that fighter is. So you know, it, I guess that that type of stuff drives me, and um, it's just disappointing, you know. At the end of the day however you call it, it was a foul. I know it was a foul when I got to see the replay. I acknowledge that. But I'm also a vet, and I've, I've been in this game for a very long time. And um, I know uh, a fight ending blow and a blow just to, you know, to get you to stop reaching for something, you know, and that wasn't a fight ending blow, so... I'll just kind of keep it at that. And when you went home that night or when you got back to the uh, the negotiating table with Bellator about your next opponent, was there anybody else that you wanted or did you just automatically want to run this one back? No, this was uh, brought to me and I said yes. You know, I'm, I'm not the guy who goes out and asking for fights. They always present me with the fights and I always say yes. So it's like, that's just always how it's been. And even though the ending was unfortunate to that last one, it's nice to see you uh, kind of competing more frequently and more consistently now. Um, how big has that been for you in, in just your training and in preparation to be able to fight three times in, I believe, 10 months or so? Yeah, you know, that's my goal is, man, if I can get three fights a year is, is perfect for me. And um, and to me, I'm the most dangerous when I'm active, you know. So as long as you keep me active and keep me with dates in mind, you know, that that's how I look at it. You know, um, I'm already looking at my next date and, you know, we're going to go from there. I know you said cut. pick fights, but was there any part of you that like, Hey, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> what's going nah. on, man? I know you say you don't pick fights, but I was kind of honestly surprised you took this fight again. So was there any part of you that was like, don't give me that name? Well, my thing is like, like I've been saying, you know, this is before the the tragic incident happened last fight. I was like, you know, this is a guy who not to me guys want to fight. You know what I mean? Like you, people can say what they want to say. At the end of the day, if you're a ranked guy, you don't want to fight this guy. You don't want to fight this 13, whatever he's 13 and 0 or whatever, whatever O he is. But you don't want to risk it. Let's, let's, like, let's keep it real. These guys don't want to risk the fight. I would, if, if a guy's number five or number four or number six, why risk it on somebody who's not even in the, in the, in the rankings? Which, the rankings are stupid and they suck, but why risk it? You would rather risk it against the guy who's number eight or number four, you know? So these are the guys that are, that, the, the guys that nobody wants to fight, and I always welcome that shit. So that's what drives me in this game, in this diluted-ass game we're in right now. So these are the things that get me excited. Why do you think that is? Because it's funny that you identify it, right? Like, you're not sh shying away from it. You're like, dude, this is some undefeated guy that nobody wants to fight because he doesn't have a name. You're saying, I welcome that. Throw that to me. Why do you think you're built different than everybody else? 
I got into fighting, man, because I liked the feeling I got from fighting before I was doing it as a as a sport, right? So it wasn't for media and social media and all that shit, you know, or or fucking YouTubers and I was I got it because I liked the feeling of how I felt in the fight and after the fight. So, and what am I doing it for? You know what I mean? Like, why why am I even fighting if I'm not fighting the best guys? You know, so it's just like, what's the point of me waking up in the fucking morning, training my ass off, dieting, eating bullshit, to fight scrubs, you know what I mean? Like, it, to me, it, it makes it makes no fucking sense. You know what I mean? This is what I love to do, and I love to do it because the feeling I get from it. It's not for all the other shit that you know comes with it. So, I don't know, man. I just that old cut from that old cloth. I guess you say. Respect for that. Uh, I'll ask you, have, have you let yourself think at all? What happens if I do accidentally foul him in here? Like, what's this dude going to do? Is that going to be a mental challenge at all for you to be like, nah. I, I can't foul this dude or we're nah. going to see a replay? That motherfucker puts his head right back where it was. I'm going right back to it. But I just look at the ref and make sure that I got an arc on it. So that's like, you know, when you see somebody hit somebody in the nuts, like an inside leg kick, and then they're scared to do it. But then you see those guys that go right back to it. It's, that's... Yeah, I'm, you put your head right there. I'm going to arc it better this time. Last thing for me, uh, you said you already got the next day circled. Obviously, you pick up a big win here. What, what is the plan next? Temecula. Why wouldn't they have me on a Temecula card? I don't understand. I'm the, I, I, like, every time I fought there, it's, it's been crazy. So I, I, I don't understand why I wouldn't be on a Temecula card. Right here. So coming out of Riverside, how does it feel to fight, you know, close to home? It feels good, man. Um, it feels a little weird because I've been staying at home for the past couple of days. You know, usually I'm in fight, uh, you know, fight week. I'm just stayed, uh, you know, I stay at the, cas uh, not the casino, the hotel, you know, and doing all, going through all that motion. But it's been, it's been it's been a little crazy, but then it, at, on the other side of it, it feels good, you know, because fighters, like, you know, fight week is always tense as shit. You know, you're you're trying to look fucking like as normal as you can. Even if you feel a little tired, you don't want to show you're tired because you got fucking camps looking. And when you're hitting mitts, you're looking over your shoulder and it makes, you know, this is, this is shit that, to me, fighters go through as far as what I go through, you know? So any any move that I'm making on fight week, it's always like my head's on a swivel, but, you know, being at home, being in my gym, training, not having to be here, it's just kind of refreshing, you know? So so how does being at home affect your, your training camp? My training camp? Yeah, like how do you train differently, you know, being at home versus, you know, having camps, you know, on the road? To you know, farther fights? Oh, no, I've never had camps on the road. I'm just saying as far as fight week. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, being able to go back home during fight week, which, in, you know, I've, I've never experienced that before, you know, being able to. So so with this fight, you know, debuting on CBS, how do you feel about the platform that Bellator is, you know, putting forth? It's good. You know, I'm on YouTube. I don't know if you heard, but... <laughs> Right here, uh, Lorenz. So with a win here, uh, you'll be on an eight-fight win streak. Great momentum here going in early 2023. Uh, what's your perfect 2023? No, and, seven uh, fight. What's that? Seven fight. Seven fight. Th yeah. This win would be the eighth, no? I think it's a seventh. It would have been the last fight, but it was, you know. the True, yeah, yeah complications yeah. there. Yeah, but. Yeah. Regardless, you know, great great um, momentum coming into this fight. You've had some great performances in the last in, in your last fights. Again, what is your perfect 2023? And uh, for this year to really go perfectly for you, what do you expect? And uh, where do you want to be, you know, towards the end of the year? 
Um, I for me, it's like three fights, man. We're already here in February. I get this fight, get another fight, get one more fight, and that's good. It's good for me. You know, at the end of the day, man, I don't talk. I just fucking lower my head, strap up my boots, and just go to work. You know, I don't need to talk about anything. You know what I mean? So I just keep piling them up. And that we're at, uh, shit, no. Yeah, seven. No, no. Yeah, seven and L. Sorry, seven and L. I don't know. See, this, that's what I'm talking about. I don't even fucking know the streak, but I just know I've been, I just been piling them up. Lorenz, right here. Is this Lorenz Larkin or is this the Arthur Ego? Nah, this is Lorenz Larkin. All right. You talking about boss hog? You, you'll know when you get boss hog. Got it, got it, got it. With that being said, no boss hog here. So, I mean, riding a 6 0 uh, fight win streak, fought on the biggest promotions that they already had, fought on cards already with the legends. I feel like your fighting style kind of caters to the crowd here, being that we're going to see one of the deadliest strikers in Fader. How do you feel about that? I feel like you're pretty accurate, my man. No, <laughs> no you know, that. I think that's always been my, my, my style and what's kind of got me to the point where, you know, fight fans like to see me fight. You know, I just go in there and not scared to try some and and just I guess just my style in general is it's just pretty flashy and people like to watch it. So, you know, it's it's good. It's it's always great to, you know, share share the same cage as, you know, these guys and these guys who really put in a lot of work for the sport, you know, over the years and you know, it just kind of uh, reminds you, you know, of the hard work you put in to, to be in this type of situation. So, you know, I'm always, you know, um, grateful for things like that and, you know, see these type of fights and be a part of these type of uh, cards. So, you know, it's good. And yeah, last one for me. Um, you said you were adamant on this after your last fight. You kept saying he had nothing for me. He had nothing for me. When he was on top of me, trust me, he had nothing for me. What are you going to do in this fight to exploit that? My plan is the same thing I was going to do last fight. You know, it just didn't get there. So, you know, we'll see. Uh, I mean, all I can do is hope that he has the best, he's had the best camp that he's had, you know, and comes in there 100%. And only time will tell. What's up, Lorenz? Uh, Lorenz. Uh, you got it. You got it. Um, over here. Um, just want to get back to your preparation a little bit. You know, being from Riverside and being so close to home, having CBS be the be the broadcast for, for this, did it feel different in the gym? And or? YouTube. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yeah. So was there any extra energy in the gym among your training partners that they're going to be close to the experience this time, too? Any different experience? Well, like, yeah. just, just the energy in the gym. Did, did it feel like your training partners brought a little extra or there was some extra buzz or excitement around the fight? No, man. Uh, camp is camp. You know, um, from fighting in the backyard to to Madison Square Garden, you know, camp is, is camp. I'm always pushing myself. My training partners are always pushing me because if they're not, I get in their ass and, and, and make them push it, you know? So it's like, there's no difference. You know, CBS is a great network, but they don't, you know, it, that doesn't drive me to push harder. You know, it just Im embedded in, in the type of coaching I got and my mental mentality about everything, you know? So it could have been this or, 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 Somewhere else, you know, it's, it's going to be the same type of camp and the same type of grind. Uh, another thing I wanted to ask you, um, you've been, I, I want to say, about 14, 15 years deep in, into your professional career. And you've always been sort of an even-keeled person and avoided a lot of the foolishness. What is the approach that you've taken that, that entire time to maintain the, the stability in your mind uh, throughout something as crazy as mixed martial arts? You want the honest truth? Absolutely. All right. Well, for me, 
and it's always how I've been. I, after I fight, I distance myself from MMA completely. I don't want to talk about MMA. I, I've done it for fuck, years, years now. You know, like when I'm training, I'm training, but when I'm outside training, I don't want nothing to do with MMA, nothing to do with the sport. And it, I guess in a sense for me, it, it allows me to miss it. And so, you know what I mean? So it kind of, I just, I'm not the fighter who's like fully indulged in MMA. You know, I, I'd like to do a lot of other things that bring me away from the sport so that when I come back, I'm, I'm like enthusiastic about it and I want to, but it's like over the years and years, it's starting to get harder and harder because the bullshit, you know, that this combat sports is becoming, you know, so it's like, but I still got it, you know, so I still got it in me, but it's just, I distance myself and I try not to look at fucking uh, Instagram shorts and <laughs> all that type of stuff. Um, last one for me, um, that I want to say it's about an hour or so drive from Riverside to here. Yeah, yeah, about an hour and a half. Oh, yeah. Here, yeah. leaving, yeah. leaving is totally different. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. So, can you just um, walk us through that? What's that car ride like? I mean, normally you just come down from the hotel room and, you know, meet media folks or yeah. do you stare downs or whatnot. What's it like that drive? Do you, are you playing music? What are you listening to? What, what What's going through your brain as you're making that ride down the highway? Yeah, uh, just listening to my corners bicker about bullshit. <laughs> uh Yeah, I'll put his ass on blast. My my coach wrote me today, so he uh <laughs> he's talking about how he had to do a complaint because he got into it with the Starbucks because <laughs> they took too long with the coffee. I was just like, dude, this is some bullshit. So yeah, that's that's the type <laughs> that's the type of shit I'm dealing with. We'll take our last question over there from Dylan. What's up, Lorenz over here? You talked about Coach Romy. I wanted to ask you about Coach Rick McCorkle, how he's influenced you throughout your mixed martial arts career and especially what it's been like to work with him for this training camp. Bro, um, literally, he's, he's the guy who's, who's really, he's like focuses on my strength and conditioning and uh, he's really turned my... I guess I would say for fighters, well, I, can't, I don't want to say for fighters because I don't want to speak for everybody else. But for me, a lot of the times in the past when I've been with past promotions or, you know, or yeah, even with past promotions, in the fights, I've always been cautious of my tank, you know, and um, don't go too hard or, you know, and, and you're just always – worrying about your your gas tank you know what i mean you don't want to exert and da, 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 da. so um working with him has got my mind frame you know and this has been past couple years now it doesn't matter how the fucking fight goes you know what i mean how i look at fights now is totally different how i look at fights back then you know it's it's i look at it like if this guy comes out and does this 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 it doesn't matter i can go balls to the wall 15 minutes doesn't matter. If you want to coast it, I can coast it. But if you turn it up, I can turn it up and I won't stop, you know. So he's gave me a whole different um, just outlook and confidence in my strength and conditioning to where it's, where it's at now, you know. So he's, he's done a lot.